Dan Radio Style, hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Correct inner dialogue will move mountains. And I'll tell you what, folks, all we need, one sentence. One sentence is all you really need to truly start to see an outward change in your world. There's a lot of us that have been doing this manifestation a lot. We're imagining things. We're doing this. We're doing that. I'm telling you, for me, this has made a huge difference. I've done the imaginal work that does do the creation of the manifestation. Where I've found trouble, and I think many others do as well, is during the day, we notice things about real life, we have thoughts, we experience the day moment by moment. And oftentimes we have these times where we start to second guess, we start to have negative dialogues, we start to have negative conversations in our mind, and maybe don't think to revise. And this, this particular video is not about revising. What this particular video is about is about creating that sentence. What is that sentence? And Neville Goddard, fortunately, has a wonderful beginning anyway of chapter five from Awakened Imagination and the Search. And the chapter is called The Coin of Heaven. Does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? And the prophet replied, all poets believe that it, it does. And in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removed mountains. But many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything. That was Blake in Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Also from Romans uh, chapter 14, verse 5, Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now, persuasion is funny in this particular part, and he's going to talk about it also in this next paragraph. And it reminds me of something. I've done a video on it. can't remember which one it was, so I can't link it, but... There was a time where I've definitely manifested things extremely quickly. And it was that, like, I needed a job and it was getting serious, right? Like, it was just that, like, that, that persuasion of the universe saying, I, this has to happen. There's no other way. And for whatever case, you get that energy behind it. And it seems to manifest almost instantly. And it's very odd how it happens. And I think Blake is sort of referencing the act, the part of it that's, hard to reproduce. It's hard to explain what happened. It's hard to explain how I got there. But I mean, if it happens again, I'm going to be paying close attention. So Goddard continues, persuasion is an inner effort of intense attention. To listen attentively as though you heard is to evoke, to activate. By listening, you can hear what you want to hear and persuade those beyond the range of your outer ear. Speak it inwardly in your imagination only. Make your inner conversation match your fulfilled desire. What you desire to hear without, you must hear within. Embrace the without within and become one who hears only that which implies the fulfillment of his desires. And all the external happenings in your world will become a bridge leading to the objective realization of your desire. One of the beautiful things about persuasion in that internal monologue that so many of us kind of go through is oftentimes we have thoughts in our head maybe about our boss maybe about our specific person maybe about some sort of situation that we know needs to happen or we know has occurred and sort of has created a little bit of a speed bump for us we need to replay that imagination that thought that conversation in our mind we need to replay it. We need to revise it. We need to think of it the way that it can be, that the way we want it to be. That inner thought needs to match what outer thought needs to occur. So if there's someone that's behaving in a particular way that you don't like, imagine them behaving properly. Imagine them saying the things inside of you properly when you have the internal conversations. And what you'll find happens is they actually change in the outer world. If there's something that you're trying to alter in the outer world, you change it in your inner world. You have some sort of sentence that speaks the truth about what it is you desire. He'll get more into it here coming up. Your inner speech is perpetually written all around you in the happenings. Learn to relate these happenings to your inner speech, and you will become self-taught. By inner speech is meant those mental conversations which you carry on with yourself. They may be inaudible when you are awake because of the noise and distractions of the outer world of becoming, but they are quite audible in deep meditation and dream. But whether they can be audible or inaudible, you are their author and fashion your world in their likeness. Now, one of the things that he's kind of hinting at here 
is one of the easiest ways and why we oftentimes recommend meditation is it is a place where you actually kind of silence the mind to a degree. And no one completely silences the mind per se. You can kind of get off into trances. You can be very good and focused on your breathing. I'm not looking for a bunch of people to comment and say, oh, bah, 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 bah. no, for most part, you're going to have some thoughts. You just don't hold on to them. You let them pass through. But you'll find that that's where a lot of this inner dialogue is constantly occurring in our lives. And we don't realize we're doing it. Sometimes it might be as mundane as I forgot to pick up something at the store. Other times it might be, ah, oh, my neighbor. And then you start thinking about her and you're like, yeah, and then she's got that weird thing with the kid and the way she is with animals. I just don't understand why she's so weird, right? Like we just have these weird thoughts in our head that don't necessarily speak good of them. And if we're having issues with our neighbor, and we keep noticing and having inner monologues about how they're messed up, then we're going to continue to create that experience in our lives. They might not necessarily be all messed up, but our perception, what we experience, what we see, us pushed out, that will be messed up. So as it says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, how can I not enjoy this, this book? There is a God in heaven, and heaven is within you that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in our latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Inner speech from the premises of fulfilled desire is the way to create an intelligible world for yourself. Observe your inner speech, for it is the cause of future action. Inner speech reveals the state of consciousness from which you view the world. Make your inner speech match your fulfilled desire, for your inner speech is manifested all around you in happenings. Now, one thing that happens if we're not guiding our inner speech, or at least paying attention to it, or at least if we've got a sentence, and we just let things happen, we are painting and creating our world based off of these inner dialogues. Now, this is where your beliefs will pop up accidentally. You won't hear it or see it. Someone even wrote in a comment one time, and they're like, yeah, I totally agree, and this is a blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you just proved my point. You said exactly what it was that I was saying you should be wary of, and you thought you had it all dialed in. It happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. This has been one of the single biggest helpful things for me that I can think of in a long time. This, and it's not an affirmation. Affirmations are weirdly different for some reason. This is that conversation inside myself, what I'm trying to do. I still liken it to trying to tell my crew what I'd like them to do for me. But it still ultimately is making sure that our conscious mind is consciously working towards what it is we desire. And what it does is it gets the subconscious to create the same thing. And when you can consciously create the story the way your heart desires, you actually feel good about it. But when you're out of balance on that, you'll frequently find that you don't feel good about it. You feel out of sync. You feel out of balance. And that is one of the easiest ways to tell that something needs to change inside. The whole manifested world goes to show us what use we have made of the word or our inner speech. An uncritical observation of our inner talking will reveal to us the ideas from which we view the world. Inner talking mirrors our imagination, and our imagination mirrors the state with which it is fused. If the state with which we are fused is the cause of the phenomenon of our life, then we are relieved of the burden of wondering what to do, for we have no alternative but to identify ourselves with our aim. And inasmuch as the state with which we are identified mirrors itself in our speech, then to change the state with which we are fused, we must first change our inner talking. It is our inner conversation which makes tomorrow's facts. So many of us don't hear this conversation daily. We don't pay attention to it. We don't catch ourselves doing it. This is one of the single biggest things that can change everything for you. A lot of us are like, yeah, 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 I hear it. No, you don't. I still miss a lot of stuff, and I pay a lot of attention to this. It is something you will get better and better at, but the second you start paying attention to it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I did not realize the places I'm doing this. You can change overnight. Put off the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which is created in righteousness. That was from Ephesians 
chapter 4, verses 22 to 24. Also, from Quintilian, our minds, like our stomachs, are wetted by change of food. A lot of us do not realize some of the thoughts that we entertain. Maybe we're angry with someone. Maybe we're this or that. And we keep having these thoughts. And for some reason, we don't think there's a problem with it. But you are thinking things. You're, you're highlighting things that are negative, And you continue to replay those conversations in our mind. We continue to replay that scene over and over. And we continue to create it through that belief, through that, un, that, that understanding that that's how it is. Like we just, we have it painted in our heads that this is the truth. By having a better sentence, by having a better reality to talk about, you can change everything. So stop all the old mechanical negative inner talking and start a new positive and constructive inner speech from premises of fulfilled desires. Inner talking is the beginning, the sowing of the seeds of the future action. To determine the action, you must consciously initiate and control your inner talking. This is, again, notice that you're doing it. And then initiate positive talking. Construct a sentence which implies the fulfillment of your aim, such as, I have a large, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. Or... I am happily married, or I am wanted. I am contributing to the good of the world. And repeat such sentence over and over until you are inwardly affected by it. Our inner speech represents in various ways the world in which we live. You get that sentence. Figure out a way to construct it. Here, here are the rules. You want it completely positive. If it can be an I am statement, it just some sort of in the now Right now, not in the future, not in the past, right now. A statement that is present tense and says what it is that you already have, already desire. All of those things are perfect. Whatever your sentence is. And it can be one, two, three, and four sentences. For some people, that's a lot to memorize. For others, one sentence is perfect. Whatever's going to work for you. But have that one statement of fact. That one inner dialogue moment. That one thing that will... Probably catch yourself saying the opposite from time to time, and you'll replace it and maybe have a couple more follow-up statements about how you're wonderful and great. As John said in chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. D.H. Lawrence also wrote, Those that go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness, and the loveless never find love. Only loving finds love, and they never have to seek for it. One of the things that so many of us forget is that we have the thing that we desire already. You have to, because if you don't, you're separated from it. And if you're separated from it, you'll never manifest it because you've created separation and that was your manifestation. You have the thing you desire. You are it already. Change your inner conversation. Change that inner dialogue. Give yourself one power sentence, one sentence that can change your entire world. Neville Goddard's talking about it. That one sentence can change everything overnight. I literally rounded corners. I steered my ship, and things are totally looking up and up for me. A lot of changes happened. There was inspired action. I've done videos about pieces of it. A lot has come from it. It wasn't like I just started saying nice things and everything got better. No, I started saying nice things and then things started showing up in my life. Ideas started popping into my head. I started talking to other people that happened to know about things. Certain videos came upon me. Like It happened perfectly. And it all happened when I changed my inner dialogue. Change your world. Get one power sentence. Make it yours. Say it frequently. And watch how things happen. Stan Radio style.